so in this video today we will see the external features of the cerebellum so this is how the cerebellum looks we have removed the upper part of the cerebrum this is the brain stem this hole is your rhombencephalon part the anterior part or the ventral part of what is made up of the brain stem this portion is of midbrain this is the pons this is the external if you see the external features of the pons it is marked by a transverse ridges and in between you have got a groove what is known as the basilary groove and this is the lower part that is the medulla oblongata so, so this is a part of the rhombencephalon which lies ventrally and posteriorly you have got the cerebellum cerebellum occupies in the posterior cranial fossa now this cerebellum if you look it looks like a oval in shape and it has got a larger transverse diameter compared to the anteroposterior diameter superiorly if you see this whatever portion you are able to see it is known as the superior surface of the cerebellum well this is what is known as the inferior surface of cerebellum if you compare both the surface these two portion they are known as the cerebellar hemisphere and both the hemisphere they are united in the midline while with this part what is known as the vermis now this vermis which lies on the superior surface is known as superior vermis while the vermis which lies on inferior surface over in this groove is known as the inferior vermis. So vermis will uh, attach to both the cerebral hemisphere in the midline. Now if you see the concentrate on the superior surface, superior surface is convex in its midline because of the superior vermis. If you see on the inferior surface, it is grooved and this groove part is known as the vallecula. This posterior portion is notch you can say this there is a notch on posterior aspect similarly in the anterior aspect also there is a notch so this is known as anterior notch of the cerebellum this is known as the posterior notch of the cerebellum in this posterior notch lies the fox cerebri cerebelli sorry inferiorly this groove portion is known as the vallecula so vallecula is the deep groove in relation to the inferior vermis if you cut it apart and open it you can see this is the part of the anterior notch this is what you are able to see and what we are able to see right now this is the floor of the fourth ventricle so this floor of the fourth ventricle will separate the brain stem anteriorly to the cerebellum posteriorly this floor is formed by the posterior part of the pons as well as the upper open part of the medulla this is the upper open part of the medulla this portion is the upper open part of the medulla and this is what is known as your anterior notch area this cerebellum forms along with the superior medullary vellum the roof of the fourth ventricle now we'll concentrate on the other aspects so each cerebellum if you see there are multiple transverse grooves over here which are known as the fissures and each fissure will divide the cerebellum into the multiple folia this is leaf like arrangement known as folia but out of this there are three constant fissures are there which will divide the morphologically into the three uh, which will divide the anatomically in cerebellum into the three lobes that is anterior lobe posterior or the median lobe and the flocculon nodular lobe now which are those three constant fissures one is at the level of this this fissure is known as transverse fissure so this transverse fissure will divide the cerebellum into the superior as well as the inferior half on the superior aspect between the anterior two third and the posterior one third you have got the another fissure what is known as fissura prima or the primary fissure this is the primary fissure which you are able to see and further on the inferior aspect you have got the this is your posterolateral fissure which will ultimately divide it uh, it separates it from this the flocculo nodular lobe this is the flocculus what you are able to see this portion is known as the flocculus and this fissure will separate the cerebellum from rest, uh, will separate it from the rest of the cerebellum so this flocculo nodular flocculus along with the nodular part of the vermis will form what is known as flocculo nodular lobe and this is what is known as morphologically a part of the archi cerebellum Similarly, if you see this vermis, the superior vermis as well as the inferior vermis, their descriptive purpose, they are divided into the different parts. If you start from the superior most aspect, the superior vermis will have 
what is known as the first there will be a lingular part over here then which is this one this is the lingular part it is followed by what is known as the uh, your central lobule and then it is followed by the culmen declive similarly the parts are the your uh, it is known it is folium tuber and then you have got the uh, this pyramid ovula and lastly the nodule so nodule lies somewhere over here so this in if you see in section from starting from here to here if you go from above downwards the whole vermis is in relation it has got this different parts now out of these parts morphologically the this floccular nodular lobe this floccular which are there as well as the nodular part of the vermis along with this your lingula will form what is known as the uh, your archi cerebellum now the part of the cerebellum which lies in front of this fissura primer prima including the cerebral hemisphere and except lingula will form what is known as the your paleo cerebellum and the rest remaining part uh, except the your pyramid and uvula of the inferior vermis will form what is known as the neo cerebellum so there are three parts archi paleo and neo as we know that the archi cerebellum that is this focular nodular lobe along with this your lingula part is related to the function of what is known as vestibular spinal function that is for the maintenance of the tone of the your uh, what is known as the your truncal muscles now paleo cerebellum this paleo cerebellar part it is related to the tone of the muscles of your limb muscles and it is known as the part of a spinal cerebellar part and remaining part that is your neo cerebellar part will is related to the for the the fine coordination of the movements further if you see the section if i am showing you this section in this another specimen i am showing it see if you see this section you will see that there is a branching tree pattern over here in the centrally you will find a white matter and it is surrounded by the gray matter so this is how it looks like a branch of a tree and these are all known as the folia this all uh, leaf like arrangement is known as folia and whole this arrangement is what is known as arbor vitae cerebelli so this is how the arbor vitae cerebelli looks like this is how the floor of uh, roof of a fourth ventricle which is formed by the cerebellum now if you see further see this is a section i have given the horizontal section over here if i am opening it what you are able to see see this hole is your gray matter in between the uh, the central part you have got the white matter and inside the white matter there are the deep cerebellar nuclei which are of three groups that is nucleus fastigius which is related to the your archi cerebellum there is nucleus globosus and emboliformis which is related to the paleo cerebellum and nucleus your dented nucleus which is related to the neo cerebellum here i am showing you the part of the neo cerebellum that is dented nucleus see if you can see this this area this area this one and that this one this dark area which is there inside the surrounded by the white matter is your the deep nuclei which what is known as your dentate nucleus this is your dentate nucleus and these are your nucleus fastigius and emboliform part similarly if you want to see see the same thing in another specimen see i am showing it to you in another specimen this dark area which you are able to see is your dented nucleus so this is how in section in transverse section if you see the internal deep nuclei you can able to see